My name is Miguel Beltran, and uh, I I own this uh, cleaner uh, cleaner shop in Needham. We are doing this business for seven years in this location. Speaking about this specific boy, I I was reading the news, the newspaper from Ecuador, and I found that this uh, terrible act happened. A group of boys, teenagers, splashed gasoline into this boy and set a fire. So immediately, I called to the hospital. And I found that the boy was over there, was in coma, was unresponsive. And the first word that I, I hear that was, the boy is not going, he's not going to survive. He's, uh, the damage was too big. So I, I say, well, nothing to lose. We, we need to do everything possible. I was telling them that I am doing all my efforts to bring him to Shriners. I contacted Shriners. I, spoke with the surgeon in charge of the department, Dr. Sheridan, Robert Sheridan. He said, okay, he will take the boy. Shriners is one of the best hospitals for birth kids. And it's the free care. That is fantastic because our people don't have the possibilities to pay for a treatment. And uh, frankly, we don't have uh, hospitals able to do skin transplantations, for example, mm. at the level that is done here in Massachusetts. So I started uh, immediately uh, looking uh, for a plane to transport here. Getting Jackson Bautista to Shriners Hospital for Children in Boston required a medical aircraft, which would cost $53,000. As the boy's kidneys began to fail, Miguel knew that he did not have enough time to raise that kind of money. And then uh, I decided to go to the, to the highest, to the president. So I found a person that has a very close contact with the president. He's a, a person that has a foundation, a non-profit foundation in Ecuador. And she put me on with the president. The president immediately say that the boy in 48 hours has to be here. You know, and everything roll immediately, immediately. I am very grateful to him, very grateful. He was... Uh, a real compassionate person. He put his plane, you know? Not everyone has that. Miguel and his son were there on the tarmac when the plane landed and coordinated all the moving parts on the ground. Miguel has recently received an update on the boy's condition. He's, uh, he's speaking, he's eating by himself. He's going to be okay. By sure he's going to be okay. I am planning to go together with him when he's going to be discharged. I am planning to go together with him to Ecuador give mom the best gift that she can have in life. You know? Miguel has already helped about 20 critically ill children, although he feels particularly close to Ecuadorian cases. Miguel grew up in Ecuador and attended the Minsk Medical Institute when he was just 16 years old. He went on to become a successful surgeon, even earning his doctorate in breast cancer surgery. Among other achievements, Miguel has patents on devices used to control post-mastectomy edema bypass surgery. Miguel moved back to Ecuador to begin his surgical practice, but he and his wife were worried about the safety of their three young children and the lack of educational opportunities. And we decided, well, if my family feels not so good here in Ecuador, let's go, let's go to America. But not everything was okay. We had wrong expectancies about uh, the possibilities to find a job in my profession. At the beginning, I tried to go to New York University School of Medicine, but I was rejected. I was rejected supposedly because I had too many titles. And uh, I was forced to find any job that I could in New York. And at that time, we were forced to move to a little apartment. My God, you know, I was, uh, I was suffering because uh, I was forced to put my family in such a reduced space. It was horrible. Miguel knew someone who had a dry cleaning shop, so the Beltran family moved to Framingham, a close suburb of Boston. And after that, being in the cleaner, I make another attempt to go to the university, this time in Worcester. And again, I was rejected. And they say that because on that time, I was not four years a full resident of Massachusetts. That when I didn't get my license. Suffering from the 2008 recession, the dry cleaners in Framingham had to close. Miguel, however, had learned the tricks of the trade and borrowed that equipment to start his own business, New Season Cleaners. 
Today, getting stains out of shirts while one of his cleaning specialties is truly just his day job. Miguel continues to connect patients and their families with specialty hospitals in Massachusetts, such as the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He thinks that the potential costs of the trip and the paperwork add to these families' reservation about sending their children to receive foreign care. In the desperation that you, as a father or mother, feel trying to help your kid, if we can help, of course we will. I will do with pleasure to find a place, even we can support with a little money for the food and little expenses, we can do that. The institution, the nonprofit that helped me to speak with the president, they are dealing with these kind of cases, and of course I am going to be involved. This is kind of principle, you know, and I will do everything that's possible. With the help of some generous donors and customers, as well as Miguel's personal guidance, there's no telling how many more children he might save. You keep us alive. You customers are so generous to us. That's nice. That's good. Well, you're easy to be nice to. I am very grateful with people of Needham. This is a wonderful community. I like the energy. I love them. I love them and I try to do, uh, to express my gratitude through the services that we offer. We always try to do the best uh, as a way to say thank you for, for your help, for understanding, for being such a nice person.